So good morning, all of you, my friend list, who are there listening to me and watching me. This is a great session is going to happening. The one guy, the one of eminent musician, the rock classical guitar player from U.S. Florida. He has been connected with me more than ten years. We have been working together. Even he played for uh, uh, his album, My Guru. great musician has performed for him such a eminent musician internationally uh, uh, knowing the musician tony smoothman tony smoothman is a rock classical guitar player anyway i'm not going to tell you too much things actually we will interact together and uh, we will ask the questions to him and he will play for us and you will enjoy to listen hope so okay i am going for tony Hi, hello, Tony. How are you? Hi, Holly. I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm very much fine, mate. Tony, we will start with a little music, then we'll go for talk. Okay. okay? So yes, bye. Good to me. So we'll play a um, a piece from my new CD called Silent Storms. <laughs>
wonderful thank you ha amazing feast <laughs> This song has a lot of different elements in it, as you can hear. To me, it has a very Asian sound to it. Not Eastern or Middle Eastern, but more Asian. Like, almost like a Japanese type melody to it, where there's a lot of tension in some of the notes, you know? Yeah, uh, while you're playing, I, and, uh, since long years we are connected, actually, we know each other. Uh, since we met actually when you playing the i felt some kind of uh, uh, arabian elements over there while you playing uh, or arabian like uh, some kind of middle east connections or lebanese i think you are lebanon no i think is uh, 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 yeah, of course your culture may inspire you somewhat actually i felt somewhat i think absolutely growing up in my house my my family you know we are armenian but we were, uh, my family is from beirut lebanon Oh, so we're yeah. Armenian Lebanese. And growing up in my house, uh, my mother played a lot of Middle Eastern music, of course, because that's, you know, our music. Oh. And uh, as well as a lot of Indian music. We used to watch a lot of Indian movies when I was a kid. And I always was drawn to the sound of the sitar and the sarod and all these um, instruments, you know, saranji. And... Um, I mean, and Greek music a lot too. We listened to a lot of bazooki music in the house. So all of this before I really became a musician, I think music has always been with me, even before I was a musician, kind of followed me when I started picking up the guitar. My ear was already used to these sounds. So I remember when I got my first guitar, I was already hearing the sound of an oud, you know, Arabic instrument. <laughs> fascinated by world music because I grew up listening to it. It wasn't something I did to be different or anything. It was listening to when did you When did you start you were learning music? So in high, I'm um, sorry, junior high school, I started the music kind of late compared to a lot of other people. Um, I didn't start getting my first guitar until I was 13 years old. I say yeah. late because I know some people start when they're three and four and five. Um, and a teacher of mine played music of Johann Sebastian Bach, the classical musician, composer. And as soon as I heard that music, I grabbed me right away. And it was on the organ, you know, like an organ, yeah. pipe organ. And what I remember in my head, of course, I don't know if it, it was, it may be not exactly like this, but in my head, I hear something like this. You know, it was very mathematical and a lot of counterpoint and harmony, and it grabbed me right away. I heard this, and um. And so, but it made sense to me. I saw, I, like in my mind, when I close my eyes, I can see the lines of the music. It is very interesting to hear what you are, you are approach to the instrument, actually. Uh, when did you tra uh, uh, transfer to the rock classical since you were studying? Yes, so um, I went to a, a grocery store with my mom. And I went, when she was shopping, I went to the magazine aisle where they have the magazines. And in the front, I see a guitar magazine. I, I look interesting. I didn't even play guitar yet. I pick up the magazine and I opened it up and right there was a picture of the great 
classical guitarist Andre Segovia. A oh. black and white photo of him holding the classical guitar with the nylon strings. And behind him was an entire orchestra. And he was in the front. And that picture was so powerful that at that moment, I knew I wanted to play classical music on guitar. That was it. One picture. I knew it. That was, that's what I am here for. No question in my mind. I said, Mom, can I buy this magazine? I want to read this article. Yeah, sure. I get the magazine. I read all about Segovia. And then I become obsessed with classical music. And when I say classical music, um, I got into the works of Johann Sebastian Bach's Lute Suites. <laughs> You know, classical guitar. I said, this is it. So I start trying to b listen to this music and trying to transcribe it on the guitar. And it's not working very well. I can get little things, you know, but it was very hard. read it in Western music. She said, now is not the right time. We can't really afford to give you guitar lessons. But if you keep up and you show me that you really want to do this, we can discuss this later. So I kept on and kept on and I'd stay up all night trying to figure out box music. And my mom and dad said, we want to talk to you. A couple weeks later, I sat down and I said, look, we hear you in there. You're trying. You're trying your best to make this music. I think it's time that we we get serious and we get you classical guitar lessons. So we found a local teacher who could teach me how to read music. And it changed my life because then I was able to buy books and read them, read the music. And I would sit all night. <laughs> to school and I would play for my friends classical music and renaissance music for me when you know like a you know British renaissance music and all this stuff and um a teacher walked by and she heard me playing and she said, hey, she was from England. She goes, how many of these pieces do you know? I said, well, I know quite a few of them. And she goes, I would like you to come to my classroom in the morning. I'd like to talk with you. So I came in and said, bring your guitar. So I brought my guitar into her classroom the next morning. And she said, please play more for just for me. I want to hear all this music. So I started playing a lot of Renaissance music and classical music. And she goes, well, the reason why I asked you to come here is because I heard you playing yesterday, but I wanted to see how much of this music you know. Um, I, the Queen of England loves classical guitar, and I think it would be a great idea for her to hear you play. And I was in a very small city called Middleburg, Florida, and I said, there's no way we're going to reach the Queen from here. The teacher said, do you have any of this music recorded? And I said, no. And she goes, then... I'm going to pay for you to go into a recording studio and we're going to send <laughs> to the queen. And I said, oh my God, it's magic, you know? So she wrote a special letter to the queen and presented me. We recorded this music and we sent it to the queen. 
The request was that I go and perform for the Queen of England from the small city in Florida. A month later, we get a letter and uh, I open the letter back and it's from the teacher. And she said, look, uh, I want you to open this and I want you to think about your future and think about how much dedication you have to music and how, how important this is when you open this letter. So there was another letter in there was addressed to me and it uh, had a stamp on it and I opened it up and it, it was long. And in the letter was from Her Royal Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. She had received the CD and she really liked my classical guitar playing and she said it was very highly sophisticated that at the time that I requested to come and play for her, she was very busy traveling but that she wanted me to keep her informed of my career like a godmother or an aunt or something. And she said, I want you to keep sending me letters and telling me about your life and where you are. And you never know, it is possible one day that you can come and perform for me. So the queen did send me a personal letter from England, which motivated me to the next level. I said, if I reach the queen from this tiny little city in the country, then I, I think I can make things happen if I put my mind to it. And that was my biggest inspiration. And then I started playing electric guitar because I wanted to expand the possibilities of the instrument. And I was taking the scales I was learning in classical music. <laughs> named Yngwie Malmsteen. I go, who? He said, you never heard of him? I go, no. He goes, he's doing something very similar. And so in my mind, I was just trying to convert all that I knew be because it was in a small city. But then I found out that it had been done before. So, but not in my mind, I'd never heard it. So I was already trying to take these classical chord progressions. <laughs> city, I didn't have the opportunity to be around a lot of guitar players and be influenced by what everybody else is doing. I was left to a tape player and tapes that I would find and try to figure things out. So, you know, the reading the music helped me a lot, but, you know, then I started hearing guitar players playing blues and I go, well, they, those guys don't read music at all. So I'm thinking, you know, you can play the blues, you know, you can go. But this music 
So uh, this is blues actually. How you differentiate blues and rock, classical and jazz, those things actually. No? Yeah. So when um, when you play the blues, you have so much freedom. If you hit okay. a note, and I'm in classical music, if you need to go. Um, perfect really but when you're playing the blues and you go you want to go and you accidentally go it's okay it makes it even better <laughs> i call it throwing in the trash you know the extra notes that you don't mean to hit you know <laughs> You know, it's a part of the music. So for me to separate all these things, um, you know, I, I try, I don't try to think in different ways. I simply am into so much music. Like for instance, I, I relate certain things together. So for me, hearing Indian classical music for the first time was Ravi Shankar, you know, hearing Ravi Shankar, it wasn't the Beatles like a lot of people. For me, uh, um, I got a CD of, or it was a tape of Ravi Shankar playing um, with Anushka Shankar, his daughter, right? And he was doing Rag Yaman or something like that. I mean, it was incredible. And so when I finally got a sitar and I finally YouTube came around or something like that in a video, I see him playing this way on the guitar instead of one position he's using the whole guitar i go oh okay he is using the entire instrument to play and so i started thinking like that i started thinking like that <clears throat> playing around with indian music and then I started to try to come up with melodies like that and riffs, you know, like in my song from my second CD, The Light Within goes like this. started using this method of playing across the fretboard. So I said, well, if you can use it in Indian music on a sitar, then you can use it in the blues. So why don't I take the blues scale? And play this way. And then my blues playing started to sound like somebody singing instead of a guitar player copying another guitar player. So now I can go like, make it sound like, you know, Indian music is very vocal, like a vocalist, right? So you take the same concept and play a different scale and now it sounds like a blues singer. instead of, <laughs> you know, it's different now, yeah. Right, so that's how I kind of, my guitar playing developed by thinking of Indian music. Well, so you have experience with my, my guru. Uh, Pandit Vishnu Mohan, but it was how was the experience you have? Uh, you, you, I think you have 
maybe you were discussed with you the regarding music indian music is why how do you approach the indian classical music like us mainly is the slide guitar players like us yes yeah, so when i heard um pandit vishwa mohan bhat was on the album called meeting by the river which a lot of people are, who know who he is heard about him that way in the what in america you know this is the album where they were fans of rai cooter and rai cooter always brings in unique musicians to play with and i heard the album and um i got i had it and i used to listen to it every night when i went to sleep this is the music i would sleep to i became a very big fan of his and um and because i realized that this is just a this guy is a guitar player he's he's playing the guitar but he doesn't play like any guitar player in the west he's the indian blood because when he does that gamak you know the the vibrato you go you can tell who's right cooter and who's vishwa mohan bat <laughs> right away as soon as he you know he the you can tell right away so anyways um we were recording my second cd the light within and in the studio um we had some space that i wanted to fill in and i said you know to the engineer i said i would really love to have vishwam mohan bhat on this and he goes who's that <laughs> and i showed him you know he said that would be wonderful so i contacted him and he he i emailed him and he emailed me back within an hour he happened to be in america when i emailed him and he was staying with the bass player for the band called the counting crows and he gave me his phone number and he said just call me so i called him and he was i'm talking to him and in the background i hear you know he's playing mohan veena in the background while he's talking to me very light and i go there's that instrument i heard on the right cooter record so he goes how how can i help you i was like well here's what's going on on my cd and he goes i said so we would love to have you guest on the cd and he goes sure no problem so the idea was he was going to just do one song but he was in the studio he was having fun and he's like can we do two more i said let's do them come on let's let's have fun so he did the those songs and um and he sang on them too which was a lot of fun so yeah so when it comes down to uh for me uh, i say i'm a westerner but i grew up with this music i'm like a lot of other people that didn't grow up with it um so my approach to it is just by listening and it's like i can feel indian music more than i can feel almost any other kind of music it's something i'm connected somewhere with that music maybe it's because i'm from the middle east and there's something there because we use similar scales that the rogs have or something the sounds are kind of similar um so as a western musician you know it, i always say it's just an element of what i do but um when people locally hear me do it usually what i'm doing is with my band in between songs the keep or the keyboard player will hold a really nice chord um and i'll give you an idea of what i do live here i'll do like um let's see kind of like something like uh like this in between songs
So um, maybe not that fast. I would stretch this out to really build it up and bring it back down. And so I give the audience a little elements of Indian music, or maybe I'm feeling in the mood to play um, a Celtic style from Ireland or Scotland or something, and I might do something like this. <laughs> taking the audience on a little journey across the world. We left Florida, we left the United States, and I put them in a zone of something like that. And maybe if I'm going to go into my song, Dublin Jig, that has that kind of... <laughs> you know, the man kicks in and it's kind of Celtic melody. The drone that I do before we go into that, when it's just a keyboard player holding the chord, my melody is going to be Celtic. If I'm going to go into something more Eastern sounding, I'll do an Indian style thing. But I'm, I'm not educated in Indian music in that way, other than the fact that um, I do put on a, a tampura drone and I will play, <laughs> practice my ragas the way that I know how, you know? But I'm not very educated in Indian music, uh, but I read about it a lot. I'd say. But you are, you approach to the Indian music with enthusiastically. I I saw that <laughs> very very proper enthusiastically learning mind. Actually, you want to grab all those things. I have experienced last ten years that you are learning, and while we jam together, also experiencing. <laughs> well, you know, the, the contemporary American uh, situations. Uh, how do you prefer to the musicians how to expect, uh, 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 affect the musicians actually? You know? How musicians can survive after uh, these pandemic situations in America? How do you feel? Uh, can you, what do you mean by that, Polly? Because I kind of understood, but I kind of didn't understand at the same time. Uh, uh, the contemporary American situations, uh, the whole world is going to the COVID pandemic, okay? Uh, so, uh, yeah. The, how the musician can the survive. Of course, we need performance, we need to travel, we need to do so, several shows, but it is not, not, not possible now. USA is going through the very pandemic, very bad situations, several deaths were sub informed. Uh, so as a musician, as an artist, how you, uh, how you approach actually, how, what is your opinion on that? Yes, well, it's a very hard time in the world right now because it started off with this pandemic and it's gotten really bad. And, um, and a lot of people are confused because they don't know how to think about this kind of thing because it does not happen often and definitely not on this level. So the first thing to go in these situations is that everybody has to remain safe, which means the venues where the musicians play and people gather have to cease. They have to stop. This is very tough for musicians because it's not, yes, you have to make a living, you have to go out and perform, but people, non-musicians don't understand that they're musicians performing and putting out their music and playing for an audience is more important almost than getting paid to do it because it's a part of them and it's an emotional thing. So when you take that away, musicians can have a very hard time mentally can have a very because musicians already are artists so we don't really think like a lot of other people 
we, we are very delicate, we're very sensitive. And when you take away the only thing that we have as an outlet, it becomes very difficult. So what a lot of musicians are doing now, which you've seen is they'll put virtual concerts. Although it's not the same as playing out in a venue to 150 or 200 people or more, um, it's the only way they can do it, you know? And so things will get better uh, and, and everybody's really stuck in there the best that they could, but this is a very difficult time and artists understand that, you know? It's, it's really tough. It's really, really hard. Especially when you're pretty hard. You know, in front of an audience and you can't get that music out. Very hard. It's extremely hard to survive the musicians in this pandemic situations. Everywhere is lockdown is going on. We are suffering very badly. And uh, normal people never know actually what is hap happening to the musicians, what kind of uh, experience uh, they have been going, going through. <laughs> I say, oh, you poor guy, you can't go out and play your guitar, poor thing. It's so much deeper than that. It's so much deeper. So, so music is so much deeper. It is a combination of sound and silence. The silence is the basement of the all sounds which originated. So, the, so never people know like how much deep the music itself, how much you dedicated, uh, how we have been given our all life. Uh, I'm all, uh, almost, we are almost the same age, actually, I'm 50, wow. Since eight years old, we are going through the same rotations and uh, more 10 to 12 hours practicing. Normal people couldn't accept. My other another question to you. Um, contemporary political scenario in the US. Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Could you... Could you say some words on it? As yeah. a musician, as an artist, as a human being, as an American, and as an all-rounder of the world. Yeah. It's a, and, and that's the second thing, you know, the pandemic is really bad, but also um, racism is really bad. It's a bad thing all the way around. Um, whether your skin color is black, white, yellow, it doesn't matter, man. We're all one human race. And things have gotten very out of hand at this point. Um, there have been many incidents in the past, but the recent one that sparked everybody to go over the edge, um, it was really bad. And um, it's really, really hurt a lot of Americans. And I don't mean white Americans or black Americans, I mean everybody who felt the pain of that, you know? And um, a lot of people feel that they, they're treated differently. They're treated differently in, in, in this country and, um, and they're ready to change things. They're ready to see a difference. They're ready to see things be different from here on forth. That is why there's so much emotion and so much reaction because it's not just gonna stop tomorrow or next week until it changes at this point. Before we've had incidents and after a few weeks, things kind of go back to normal. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think that it's time for a change. And uh, people have to start loving one another a lot more. People have to start being more respectful. Um, although I lived in America most of my life, I was born in Greece, lived in America most of my life. I went through going in school and being called names as a, you know, kids would call me, you're a foreigner. Why do you have dark hair? All the other kids had blonde and brown hair. I have black hair, <laughs> you know that you're a foreigner, you're a foreigner, you know? So I heard it growing up. So I do understand part of it, you know? My skin color is white, but I, I got those comments. I, I understand how that feels to be suppressed and really it needs to change, man. It need, we can't move forward if we don't change, you know? Well, when you change the way that you look at things, the things you look at change. This is state of mind of the people actually. They don't, they don't know they all come from the Africa. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> it's true. 
quite funny thing is i'm ta- quite funny thing is i'm uh, talking from india which going on a very bad situation in india is not matter of the covid very dangerous situation in in casteism racism casteism and kind of uh, uh, what do you say very bad situation is that here is um, um what do you say hindu fundamentalist groups are controlling us uh, very close to the trump <laughs> Exactly. So I, I, I get it. But, but it, has to... behind the, it has behind the economic agenda that was, they have was some idea of the corporate, chronic uh, corporates wants to uh, implement their own agenda on the people. The people should be, uh, what do you say, discriminate uh, oh. or scattered, sca- scattered to the implement the agenda. It is it, it's extremely bad. We have to unite. All musicians should be unite. Uh, unite to ag- against discrimination against casteism racism and all we are all one we are coming from the africa we are, are the son of or a or a birth from the african mother there is no doubt <laughs> no i understand man i i totally understand my skin color is a lot darker than this is because i live <laughs> in a cave i call it the bat cave you know i live in the cave here my skin color is very supposed to be very very dark and you know uh so it, it, so now i you know i'm more brown really is my color it's just not getting out much and staying with this instrument you know um so but i under, i understand man i understand where things are and it, it has to change you know it's um it's a really really crazy thing man and hopefully everybody can start coming together and love one another and play music and hear music and let them, you know, let the music heal because it does do that. You know, uh, there is, there is not, there is no doubt. We will survive. There is no doubt. We will survive. Uh, we will, we will refresh liver. <laughs> we will eradicate all kind of discri- discrimination that musician can writers can uh, all, all, uh, all workers can be you know, unite. To the fight against the disc- discrimination, that musician has a, such a role uh, to support the Black Lives Matter, and not only in India, not only in America, uh, not only Black Lives Matter. The discrimination in India, discrimination in the all world, Pakistan, and everywhere. That musician can only unite against it. Musician has extreme voice. I feel always. That's right, man. I completely could you could you play for for the support of, for support to the people fight against dis- discrimination, please? What a wonderful piece! Yes. Which piece did you want to hear? Uh, fight. Uh, that is our fight against discrimination. All world unite. All world against discrimination, against uh, racism, against casteism. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Please, um, right now. Yes. Absolutely. You want to hear it with a track or without a track? With track. Let my listeners enjoy. They let, let them come out from their caves. <laughs> Here it comes. Yeah. Thank you. 
amazing it's it's very energizing it's it is a beautiful <laughs> thank, you so much, man. thank you thank how, you how many hours you practice uh how many hours do, uh, do I, a day do i practice yeah um i play guitar all day but uh, <laughs> i practice probably two hours a day three hours if i got more time four or five but i when i was younger 10 12 wasn't out of the question that is what is i asked when you were younger i think still you are younger oh well you know <laughs> I, I take care of the family and i have a daughter so i have to spend I time you do as well so you know <laughs> yeah. my family understands you know my dedication to music so i when i'm in here practicing like nobody's knocking on the door hey stop yeah they understand so like my mother i talked to my mom the other day and my dad and they were saying you know when you were younger and you were in your room there were many times my mom was coming to knock on the door to stop and my dad pulled her he goes what are you doing she goes i'm gonna tell him turn it off she goes he goes no nope, don't do it let him play let him She goes, it's one o'clock in the morning. He goes, let him play. 
Let him do his thing. Because it was loud. <laughs> if it was me, I'd be complaining. You know, turn it down. <laughs> no. but, but you know, my mom, my my dad said, let him breathe in the music. Because if you take it away, you're gonna suffocate him. You can't really feel the music. And it's right. You gotta hear the music. So, anyways, I'm very, very fortunate that I would be able to stay up till 7, 8 a.m. in the morning all night. The sun would come up and I go, oh no, not again. This is every day. And I go, ah, oh, I'm gonna change this one day. I'm gonna have a normal schedule. And I would feel guilty that I was up all night. And then I would sleep till four or five in the afternoon and I would start this process all over again. And my mom said that there were many times that I was in my room and she would see the lights on and she would open the door and I'm in the bed with a guitar passed out with the guitar and she would take the guitar and put it on the stand. I didn't even know that. And <laughs> she said many times she had to put it back on the stand. Just total dedication. If we can use that kind of dedication to kind of change the world, man, or do our little part, it's gonna make a big difference. You know what I mean? Have to believe in what you do. As some of, uh, some of uh, my uh, followers is asking, uh, could you say the words on my music? <laughs> say what? Could you say the words on my music, police music on? Oh, sure, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so um, I first, you know, heard Polly, I think it was on a YouTube video. I was looking up Mohan Vina players and I, and I heard you and something captured me immediately. It was, it was the feel and the emotion in the notes that you were playing. And um, because I'm sure there are many Mohan Vina players or, you know, Vina players and things like that, but it was the, the notes that you were playing got my attention and I messaged you and I said, I really love what you're doing with the instrument because it was different than Pandit Vishwamohan Bhatt. It was something very different, just as all musicians are different. You can have five violin players and they all come from a different place. Even though they can all play the same things, each one, if you handle the instrument, are gonna start in a different place. And so that really caught my attention about your Mohan Vina play. And then I found out you can play tabla, you can act, you can sing, you you poetry, you do all these things, man. It's incredible. So this really caught my attention with you. And uh, you're a great man, you know, and you're, you're out to change the world. And I love it. I love it, man. It's incredible. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. I think it's... Uh... Uh, this is the right time to the wind up, but the wonderful session it was. And uh, you chat with me and you expose to me the what is music, the difference uh, in blues and jazz and uh, all those things. And also your political uh, vision on uh, uh, contemporary world. As a musician, as an artist, we should unite against all racism, all discrimination all over the world. We have a role to the society. We are not just pulling the strings and our, we are giving the pain to the strings to the people that we have to fight, to, fight join together to fight against. We will uh, release as soon as possible an album together. And Tony, so we are going to wind up the show. Thank you very much. Tony, you start and we will wind up it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank <laughs> you.